to Medica Nova Wellness Studio. I'm Angelica Maria Koch with your educational videos and the most innovative and holistic approach for your well-being. This will be our last video for 2017. Can't believe it's over already, but I hope you're enjoying the new discovery series so far. It is called Healthy Family and Soul Medicine. And today I want to have a look at the theme postnatal depression, which can be a real strain on young moms out there. As already mentioned in previous videos before in this discovery series, I will only choose homeopathic remedies and natural supplements which you can get hold of in your local health food store, so nothing too complicated. After birth, the woman's body goes through a series of changes, from physical, hormonal to emotional changes some of which can be directly related to giving birth and some of which are part of the postpartum adjustments of not being pregnant anymore. So what are the physical aspects? Often the woman says, you know, my body really heals slowly, maybe due to piles and hemorrhoids. Maybe you have experienced an episiotomy, the cuts and tears in the vaginal area can be numbness around the genital region excessive urination, involuntary urination, exhaustion, even a prolapse of the uterus. There can be after pains as the uterus contracts. The production of colostrum, which is this really antibody-rich fluid which a child needs to boost its immune system. Don't deny this fantastic fluid to your child and then the real milk shoots in. So there may be engorgements and swelling of the breast. If you have breastfeeding ailments, have a look at my previous video where I gave you great tips about it that may be helpful. An increase in urination as the body lets go of the accumulated fluid during pregnancy. The vulva and vagina maybe have changed in shape and there may be problems with that. A feeling of tightness in the joints as the hormones during pregnancy have softened them and now the body starts to go back to its original state. Hair loss may be due to hormonal changes, skin changes. Maybe during pregnancy you had sort of brown spots on your face and the areola or the abdomen. The varicose veins take a little while in the legs to come back as well as the swollen ankles, for example. But today I want to talk about the emotional upheavals, from feeling euphoric to total depression and blues. I also want to mention the loss of libido here, which can happen. You know, it takes time for the vagina to heal after birth, so the muscles and the ligaments and the nerve come back to their original state. Now, if the woman didn't cheer and the birth was really lovely and there's a great support group, the partner is really helpful and supportive, the sexual feelings can come back quite naturally. But some women take time and maybe take up to a year, so don't feel guilty here. Now, I want to talk about emotional stress and really postpartum depression. When young women experience that, they often feel embarrassed. They don't want to talk about it, they want to put it under the carpet because they don't understand themselves what is happening to them, right? I mean, you have been waiting nine months for this child to come and suddenly you feel like there's no bond, there's no relationship, you don't even know what to do, you feel totally overwhelmed, everything is too demanding, everything takes twice the time. And your family expects you to be happy and you feel far from it. What to do here? And this is where I come in. The feelings of a woman experiences sort of after birth may be the most intense she maybe has ever encountered. As I said, there can be truly overwhelming, extreme feelings of being on cloud nine and then totally falling down in, into the abyss. It is common to have postnatal depression. Don't feel bad about it. But if it stretches out, let's say, to 30 weeks, then I would say, wow, you need some help. Yeah, you need some serious support here. It also can be the emotional adjustment of having a child in the first place. Right? 
doesn't have to be just the hormonal changes, but hey, my life has changed. It never will be the same as before. A satisfying birth, of course, can be very empowering for the woman, and particularly if there's a great support system there. So, you know, a little down period doesn't matter. But some women, as I said, take a lot of time with that. Some are also more prone. And I feel the ones who have a poor self-esteem, maybe two young moms, um, single moms, um, moms who don't have a great support system with their friends and their family. Then also women who have maybe given birth later in their uh, life, you know, they focus more on their career and now feel like, wow, what's that? And they're lacking this physical stamina also. Some women who experience a lot of stress during pregnancy or unexpected situations, maybe moving house or there may be bereavement even. Women who have maybe um, or wished that they could have a home birth and suddenly end up with an epidural and um, maybe a forceps delivery or a cesarean and feel totally disappointed afterwards. Some women feel like, you know, pregnancy was the best time in their life and now it's all back to square one, right? So they grieve, actually, the pregnancy. Postpartum blues is often confused with exhaustion or anemia. So we really have a look behind this statement. The typical expression are crying spells, uncontrollable crying spells. You feel like hopelessness a despair, depression, low self-confidence about life, anxiety even about the baby or in general. There can be exhaustion which is often accompanied with sleeplessness. So you wake up in the early morning not just to feed your baby but because you're all over the place and of course that adds to the depression. Mood swings, this gloominess, everything is flat a feeling of numbness and feeling dazed, a feeling of being unable to cope with anything, right? especially if there are extra demands, and more so if the woman already has children or young children. Everything seems to take extra time. And as I said, the sleeplessness really adds to that. Usually the postpartum blues, you know, sort of fades away after four weeks, but as I said, if it drags out longer, please reach out. Now, I choose homeopathic remedies for this situation as well as natural supplements because I find them really effective in this situation without choosing um, the antidepressants which often come with side effects. The homeopathic remedies I will share with you, um, usually behind the name you will find a number, um, often 6 or 30, uh, which means the potency. And uh, I would like you to take a tablet on your tongue and 15 minutes before and after do not eat and drink. Just let it dissolve, let it sort of travel through your body and let the healing begin. And the first one I would like to share with you is called sepia, sepia 30. And unquestionably, it is the leading remedy for postnatal depression. In homeopathy, we don't just want to heal the symptom, but we really want to match the remedy to the personality, and that's the magic of homeopathy. That's why it becomes an individualized medicine. So in sepia, the personality, uh, you will see they're very overwhelmed, they cry easily, um, overwhelmed by responsibilities of caring for others um, and also not feeling appreciated for the efforts maybe they have done in the family and there is then this involuntary and unconsciously sort of feeling of I hate my husband, I hate the children, I hate this whole situation there's an indifference about it and this is the feeling what women usually feel embarrassed about and don't want to talk about it but it's a, that's the truth. Typical example may be an overly dutiful wife and the mother prone to exaggerated outbursts, anger outbursts, feeling edgy, sadness, uh, also 
maybe successful professional women ambivalent about whether or how much to dedicate their time to the child now. In both cases, the impression is of someone who is worn out, exhausted, overwhelmed, dispirited, even resentful to their family members and to their loved ones. With the usual physical symptoms of, on a physical level, there's maybe a bearing down sensation in the pelvic, right? dragging down. On an emotional level, it's a worn out woman as well. The body feels, you know, really worn out. Often the woman comes in floods of tears, you know, completely resigned to the fact that she's unable to take care of her baby or hold her baby. She actually thinks about just, I just want to pack up my suitcase and travel to the beach. I have enough. I can't take it anymore. And that, of course, then puts a wedge in the relationship and the partnership. There may be definitely loss of libido at that time. The sleeplessness really adds to this whole situation and the woman feels even more worn out. And it's just a vicious cycle. Now we all know when we get tired, right? I mean, it affects the whole body. Even though these women feel like they don't want to, you know, be with their families, they still don't want to be alone. Right? That's a really keynote here. And in the midst of the depression, no matter how bad it is, you know what they like? They like to have a walk. They like to maybe even do some jogging. So this personality really thrives on, hey, send them to the yoga class, the Pilates class. Something of a strenuous workout will really bring them back to themselves again. I would choose CPR 30 in the first two weeks. I would give a remedy daily and then tape it down maybe for another four weeks or six weeks to CPR 6, one tablet daily. If you are in doubt, contact your healthcare practitioner and contact me on health at medicanova.net. I'm very happy to help you here. The next remedy is called Ignatia. Ignatia is very indicated for acute grief, sorrow, bereavement. And here the whole nervous system is affected. So even a cup of coffee would be really aggravating to the woman. Her nervous system is already stretched. And here the woman feels like I have an emotional roller coaster, right? And particularly if there was sorrow or bereavement during this time. It can manifest in mood swings, impulsiveness. I've seen this remedy indicated in women who had sort of high expectation about their birth. Let's say they wanted a home birth and it ended up in a forceps or a cesarean delivery. And the feeling afterwards, after giving birth, is one of disappointment. You know, really feeling, oh my God, what happened here? I wanted it so differently. This is not what, what I imagined. So there can be this feeling of disappointment and Ignatia can really help here because it clears the slate in order for you to start really bonding with your child. I wouldn't say the woman had unrealistic you know, uh, wishes here, but life turned out differently and it really affected her emotional being then. So these women often try to hide their symptoms, right? They have a facade. Why? Because if they really show how they feel, their child may be t been taken away or the family really has a strong response now, right? So there is a silent grief, suppression of emotions, which of course then add to the general well-being. I would say in the first week, take Ignatia 30 morning and evening Again, 10 minutes and 15 minutes before and after, do not eat and drink. And then if there is any slight improvement, stop. Or maybe do it for 10 days, right? And then stop and only repeat if indicated. Pulsatilla. Pulsatilla is a remedy which is often not so used during postnatal depression, but I really want to share the remedy with you because it's, it's vital. 
Now here, uh, the personality is much more milder than sepia. They're more vulnerable. They cry easily. And it should be really considered for patients whose emotional reactions are too readily adaptable to every outside force or influence at the expense of their own needs. I've seen this remedy often indicated in situations, let's say you've given birth, and you feel like the whole family dances around the child and you feel abandoned. You feel like, I don't get the attention anymore which I got during pregnancy. I feel left out. I don't like this. You maybe feel a little bit jealous even towards your baby, right? And feel like, oh, this is not what I expected. I wish this never happened. That can cause postnatal depression. Pusatilla is a wonderful remedy here. Now, Pusatilla has more of a maternal, instinctual feeling than sepia. And therefore the woman is often surprised herself that she feels so out of sync right now. But the real cause is because she feels abandoned. She feels left out now. Right? She was the attention during pregnancy. And now the table have changed. So have a look at this inner feelings and be truthful to yourself, right? Positilla can be a really great help here. I would suggest uh, Positilla 30, one tablet daily again, then continue with Positilla 6. So the first week Positilla 30, one tablet daily, and then continue with Positilla 6 maybe for another month and see how that helps. Often they want to have um, fresh air, open windows, um, they don't drink so much, so you should drink a little bit more fluids here. They're sensitive to rich food, but the core feeling is really, I feel like left out. I want a little bit more love. They also feel much better for company and, um, you know, somebody patting their shoulders and saying, hey, it's going to be okay. Whereas sepia, if, if it has the consolation, they really don't feel better because it's a hormonal shift, a deep, deep hormonal shift which happened here. I also love to share with you some herbal recipes. They really go well in combination here with homeopathic remedies. There's a postpartum depression formula and here I would like you to go to a herbal store and ask to make, them, uh, make your tincture an extract. The formulas I refer to are from Rosemary Gladstone, a fantastic herbalist, and here equal parts wild yam tuber, Agnus castosperus, gota cola herb, and verban herb. They really work very well. Take one teaspoon five times daily. It helps you to settle down a little bit. To renew your vitality after birth. I think one of the best times to use homeopathic remedies or herbal recipes are after pregnancy or straight after giving birth. Helps will aid in restoring the woman's vitality and fill the depleted reservoir of strengths that sometimes follow a particular a difficult birth. Drink plenty of herbal nervins and you know to really boost your um, nervous system and your immune system. I really love superfruit here. Bring in clamac, alder, spirulina, chlorella, oxygenate your blood cells again. Herbs maybe skullcap, calm down the nervous system, lemon balm, valerian, lavender, motherwort is a wonderful herb here. Chamomile sometimes to boost and to nourish your body. I would say raspberry leaf, nettle, you know, it really brings the production of the milk as well. Oat straw is real sort of strong building herb, alfalfa, really lovely uh, support here. And don't forget dandelion greens. I want to share with you a tea. It's called Joy Tea. Two parts of chamomile, three parts of lemon balm, one part of hawthorn berries and the blossoms if you can get them, two parts of hibiscus flowers, two parts of rose petals and hopefully unsprayed flowers. 
eighth of a part of lavender flowers and eighth of a part of cardamom pots, usually grounded. Take about four to six tablespoons of this herb in one quart of water and let it stand at the windowsill, particularly if there's sunshine. If it's winter, then put it more on the south side of the window. And just let it be there for many hours or even overnight. Strain it and sift it. And I would say four to five cups a day. And just take in the life force of these beautiful herbs. It's called joy tea, not for any reason. I want to talk also some natural supplements. Omega-3 fatty acids here are really, really important. The University of Kansas Medical Center has done a lot of research and the direct link between the lack of omega-3 and postnatal depression. Depression in generally. These oils are also anti-inflammatory. So a low tissue level of DHA are reported in patients with postpartum depression and the physiological demands of pregnancy and the lactation, the breastfeeding, put a childbearing woman at particular risk of experience low DHA. So I would say double the dose even, you know, morning and evening, particularly in the first two weeks. Acupuncture can be really helpful here uh, to balance the hormonal status. Exercise, you know, go out and run around the park and if you have don't have time, go out and on the internet and look for yoga sessions at home and they can really help and breathe, you know, re try to relax within. Um, this will pass, this shall pass, I'm convinced about it. And all these natural tips which I've given you, they're very effective and they kick in quite fast. I think that's it for today. So again, to stay updated with all the ongoing videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, share and like it, particularly among young moms out there or any friends you feel like can benefit from these videos and also from Living Optimal Health. If you want to know more about my work, I encourage you to go to my website medicanova.net at the online academy because there you find comprehensive and really inspiring home study courses in homeopathy for the whole family but also uh, for pregnancy, labor and postnatal care which maybe benefit midwives, doulas, childbirth educators and nurses even. You also find a course about quantum healing, being a living quantum healing, transforming your mind, body and soul in the new world. Um, and if you're interested in a personal health consultation for yourself or your children, don't hold back and contact me at my email health at medicanova.net. As I will be traveling now over the holidays, I will continue with more videos by mid-January mid and with all my heart. I wish you a wonderful new year. May it be filled with joy, vibrant health, most of all love. Thank you for watching this year, supporting my work and I hope to see you soon again. Much love, take care.